Hello, welcome to Butler School. So this is episode four. I thought I'd put the hat on by popular demand. Although I must say, first rule, don't wear a hat indoors, it's rude, so I'll take a bit of that. So, today is wine day, um, which I think maybe is what today should be called full stop. This is wine day today. We're gonna look at the serving of and the, the pouring and the way the glasses go. We're not gonna to get today, we're not gonna get bogged down in tasting or what different sorts of wines are or anything like that or regions. That's for another day. Today we're looking at the service of wine. Now, first I'd like to talk to you about where the glasses go. First of all, the glasses of course go on the right hand side of the place setting. These are set up in what I would refer to as a British setting. So they all go in a straight line. They go from the first thing you drink through to the last thing you drink. So here we go, we've got our water. So the water is usually pre-poured before the guests enter the room. That is the standard practice. I would only pour it literally one minute, two minutes before they enter the room, so it's still nice and cool. You wouldn't normally put ice in dinner water, unless your guests particularly like ice, but it should still be nice and cool. Then you have your white wine, which in this case goes with our fish course, we've laid up for a fish course. So your, um, you know, and your appropriately matched wine. Interestingly, we've got two different things here. You could be matching wine to the course, so you have the wine that tastes best with whatever you're serving. Or you might just be sitting with tradition, which is white wine for starter and for fish, and then red wine for main, irrespective of what you're serving. If you're serving fish for main, you still go for red wine in a traditional setting. But that is not necessarily the wine that is best suited to the dish that you're serving. So there's two separate things there. And then we'd be moving on to pudding wine, which in Britain, in the UK, is traditionally served with pudding, obviously, hence the name. In France, they, they don't serve it with the pudding. It's generally served with cheese. Uh, they don't think the pairing goes sweet and sweet very well together, which to be honest, yes, there's a lot of merit to that. Uh, of course, in Britain, with the cheese, we tend to serve port. I've also put out a, uh, a whiskey glass here, just to end the meal, because that's another thing that goes beautifully with cheese. Um, personally, whiskey and cheese is one of the best pairings. That's just my to my palate. You experiment, see what you like. So anyway, these are, in a straight line, like I say, the British style. Now, the American style, which is adopted by quite a lot of the world, uh, is slightly different. So they like to lay up in a diamond formation. So you have your water glass here, your white wine glass there, your red wine glass behind, and there is your third glass, be putting wine or whatever. So that's how they like to do it, in a diamond formation. This is very practical, because it actually takes up a lot less space on the table. So there's more than one thing to consider here. You've got tradition, but you've also physically got to fit all the glasses on. Although having said that, you don't have to put them all on at the start. That's again, it's a matter of taste. Some people like to have all the glasses on before you start the meal. It looks very grand, very impressive. Everyone walking into the room is straight away seeing how many different wines they're gonna drink. It's quite exciting. But there's also a school of thought that there should just be the white wine, red wine, and water, and then all subsequent glasses should be placed as they're used and the others removed. Neither is right or wrong. It's just a different way of doing it. Now, then of course, I should probably mention um, should we call it a restaurant setting? Maybe very specifically an Italian restaurant setting where the red wine glass, or what I would think of as a red wine glass, is quite often used as the water glass. So they won't have a tumbler for water at all. So they've got their red wine, their what? 
sound computer, I can't remember. They've got their water glass at the back then, and they've got their red wine glass here, and they've got their white wine glass here. Now, I don't like that at all, personally. I, I don't see any reason that a red wine glass should ever be a water glass, because why would you particularly want to spill the water around? Oh, lovely nose from that water, silly. But anyway, again, that's just my opinion. I'm not telling you you're wrong if you do that. Well, I am a bit, but I'm not really telling you wrong. It's just different. Than that. So, there is a logical reason for the way the glass is put out. That reason is practicality. Like most things you'll find, the way the butlers do things, it's done in the most practical way. So even if we do a bit of an amalgamation of the two styles, like a British and an American style here, so we'll do the glasses in a straight line, but the water glass front and center, which is actually a setup that I quite like, to be honest. It's sort of best of both worlds. What you'll notice is, you've got easy access to all the glasses when you're serving. So you'll have your, your guests will be sat here and it's very easy to get at these glasses. They're also being served in the sequence of the course. So you'd normally remove this white, unless they're still gonna use it, you'd normally remove this white wine glass that's been the starter wine when you've cleared um, the starter and fish course and you're onto the main. And that will free you up and allow more room on the table, etc, etc. So it's all quite practical, the reason that they go in the sequence. You don't want to be reaching over to the last glass here before you've poured the first one. Now, first of all, I'll show you how we pour a glass of wine. Right, so now we're going to serve the wine. Of course, we always serve wine from the right-hand side of the guests and we top up water, all the drinks from the right-hand side of the guests. I would say all liquid, but last time I said that, someone's like, oh, what about soup? So, all drinks from the right-hand side of the guests. Now, the rule of thumb is you pour the glass to the widest point of the glass. Now, that works fine on these sort of glasses. Uh, of course, there are some weird, wonderful shaped glasses that just keep on getting wide as you go to the top, and therefore, you know, you just sort of surface tension, so that's obviously um, not correct. So, the widest point of the glass, assuming that represents around a third of the glass. There's no reason to fill it fuller than that, because you, as the butler, are always topping it up. It's impossible for the guest to finish their glass. At least that's the idea, so they could down it in one. But even if they did, you'd be straight there to top it up again, okay? So you don't need to fill it up higher. That's just lazy. You know, that's just you not having to go back as often. So just keep it to a third. Another difference between butlering and being a uh, a restaurant waiter or sommelier is that you do not give the um, the principal, the guest, the the wine to taste. Sometimes you'll get a principal who likes to do that, but theoretically that is your job as the butler. You will open the wine, you will taste the wine, and you'll make sure that the wine is not corked, there's nothing wrong with it. Of course, when you taste the wine in a restaurant, you're not tasting it to see whether you like it. You've chosen it. It's up to you if you like it. But what you're doing is you're making sure it's not corked, it's not oxidised, it's not gone off. A butler can do that with um, authority and the guests will be happy at your, um, at your discretion. Okay? So, we hold the bottle from the base. Couple of different ways of doing that. You can hold it like that, okay? You can hold it like that, although that does take a fair bit of um, finger strength, okay? Or you can put your thumb into the pummel 
of the bottle. Assuming it has one, there are some wines, especially New World wines, which tend to have a dead flat bottom. But that's, you know, so you just have to make sure you can do both, basically. I quite like it. If it has got a nice deep pummel like this one, I like to use it. So you'll come in behind the guest. Probably best to put your left hand behind your back, just so it doesn't get in the way. Bring the bottle down. Now, what you'll notice here, I've got the label facing just sort of slightly to the left hand side. This is so as the bottle comes round, you'll see that the label is pointing directly in the eye line of the person who's having the wine poured for them. So they can read the label as you're pouring it. Okay? That's quite important. You don't want to do it like that so they can't see it. Now, I avoid talking to the guests more, interrupting the guests more than is really necessary. So I wouldn't go around saying to every single person, uh, sorry madam, sorry sir, would you like a glass of wine? It's not really necessary. Simply make a fairly big movement with the bottle so it catches their attention and then pause for just a second over the top of the wine glass. This will give them ample opportunity, let me just sit down like I'm a guest, the, the universal sign is that. If they do that, that means they don't want the glass of wine. Some people even do that. Okay? Don't want it. Well, they say no thank you. If they don't say anything, pour away. Now, like I say, make sure the um, uh, bottle is just over the glass and then pour. Now you want to do it in one continuous pour. You don't want to be pouring a bit and then thinking, well, it's not quite enough. Let's pour a bit more in. Two reasons. It doesn't look professional and it um, means you're more, more likely to spill it and it's going to take a lot longer. So, three reasons. But approximately that much wine per round is correct. What you'll notice I did is I finished pouring, I guess gave the bottle a little tiny half twist. This just helps stop it from dripping. Now, what you'll see here, I don't know if you can see that, there's one little drip there on the bottle. If left unchecked, that will actually increase as you go around the table. So what I always do is I keep a napkin in my pocket and then I simply have that folded in the palm of my hand and then just wipe the end of the bottle between every single person that I serve. It's just neat, it's not some big, not some big um, napkin over your arm or anything like that. Just a little napkin folded in the palm of your hand that you can easily slip back into your pocket just to stop that drip increasing. Now if I show you with the red wine, basically the uh, same, same technique, this time I'll do the cage, things like a cage around it rather than my thumb and the palm, just to show you the difference. We come in, we hover just over the top of the glass, and then we pour. If you're wondering why that wine looks so uh, pinky, that's because due to the lockdown, I've actually run out of wine. It's very serious. Um, so I'm having to use a bit of the children's Ribena in there. So um, uh, that's part of the reason why we won't be doing any wine tasting until I can manage to get a delivery in, because I'd just be saying, tastes like Ribena, because it is. Um, but anyway, so it's nice and simple, really. That's how it works with the wine service. Again, I'd say that's about Let's just hold that up to see how close that is to the widest point. So it's just a little bit below the widest point, but it's a big glass. You're not actively trying to get people drunk. You know, you want them to enjoy their night and have the right amount of um, the right amount of drink. I remember one time a gentleman came down to me a little worse for wear in the morning. 
said, Simeon, I fear you overserved me last night. So you don't want to overserve your guests. I hope that's been useful to you. Um, I'm going to go on. I'm also today going to do a few little tips uh, about how to um, silently open a bottle of champagne, uh, how to remove a cork which has been pushed down inside a bottle, which I think you might find very useful. Uh, I'm going to put those up as separate little short videos so you can watch them separately. Um, but thanks very much. Goodbye.